do you see how this guy is looking? He got his belly out, shirt like five sizes too small, pants is petite, and haircut is all jacked up. What's good, y'all boys? It's Nuna the Don, and today I'm going to be reacting. Bitch. <laughs> I'm tripping already. What's good, y'all boys? It's Nuna the Don, and today I'm going to be reacting to some scary animated stories. Everything that we watch is going to be down in the description box below. I'll put it dark so it can set the mood so I can be scared while watching these videos. If you like the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Also, share the video. Don't be stingy. With that being said, let's get into it. I'm not making this video for attention or sympathy or anything. I just want anyone who can help me to do that. My name's Daniel. Hi, Daniel. This is a story I wish I didn't have to tell. I've been a night owl my entire life. As a teen, I used to stay up way past midnight every night, watching terrifying videos on YouTube. I know now they were nothing compared to the horrors of the real world. Nothing compared to the tragedy my family and I went through. The story I'm going to tell to you now. Alright, talk to us. My parents, being teachers, had always emphasized the importance of sleeping well to me, and would definitely disapprove of my late night routine. So I knew that if they'd caught me up at that time, I'd be in big trouble. At first, this wasn't a problem. But after I told them about a child predator in our neighborhood... Could you imagine your parent being a teacher? You not taking no days off of school. I would be pissed. ...neighborhood that I'd seen in one of my videos. And they making sure you get all your homework done. Ain't no slacking. ...videos, they seemed to grow more and more paranoid. Which was obviously understandable. Every night, I'd hear one of them wandering into my room, checking on me, and every night, I'd immediately turn off my light and pretend to be asleep. I never knew for sure if it was my mom or dad coming in, since obviously if I opened my eyes to see, they'd know I was awake. Mostly, I presumed it was my dad, from the heavy-sounding footsteps, but either way, I found it pretty hypocritical for them to preach to me about being up late when they were awake themselves. Sometimes I wondered if they knew I wasn't sleeping, because often it was only after what seemed like hours before they'd finally leave. They should have smacked him to see if he was woke. That's my little brother and Lucy, my little sister. I'd have asked them about it, but I thought it would have confirmed any suspicions which they seemed to already have about my staying awake deep into the mornings of the next day. Like I said, I guess they were just paranoid about the child predator. It was stupid. Stupid for me to presume any of these things, and I'll never forgive myself for it, but I did it all the same. Anyway, one day, Lucy's school, where my parents both work, announced a school trip. It meant they'd be gone at some point next month from Saturday morning to Sunday morning, and it meant that I'd finally get to watch the horror movie my friend had lent me, and my parents had refused to let me watch. There was one downside, though. I'd be left to look after Alfie. He, being only six years old, my mom was reluctant- His name is Healthy? That's the best y'all could do as a, as far as a name? Ew. ...to leave him in my care alone. But my dad defended me, reminding her that Alfie had been- Oh, Alfie. Of the Still terrible. Nightmare, ...so he'd probably sleep most of the day anyway. Besides, he reassured her, He's 17. He could be given a little responsibility. With a heavy heart, my mom agreed. I honestly wish she hadn't. Finally, the morning came for them to head off. It took longer than expected because my sister said some of her favorite toy dolls had been stolen. But eventually, my mom persuaded her that they were probably just lost and told me to look for them whilst they were gone. I begrudgingly agreed, and soon they were ready to go. As they were leaving, my mom gave me a stern word, reminding me to lock the doors, not go to bed too late, and take good care of Alfie. She told me she'd be watching through the security cameras to make sure I was looking after him properly. I told her she really didn't have to worry, 
then we said our goodbyes, and they were off. Alfie and I spent most of the day playing outside, but came in after the frisbee landed near a strange man who Alfie said had been in his nightmare. I told him that that was ridiculous, because even if he somehow was in his dream, he wouldn't be able to remember. Anyway, I went by myself to get it. How are you going to tell him what he can remember from his, his dream? <clears throat> I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know that you were me. I have to admit that the man was fairly creepy. He had a huge grin, and his eyes, staring right at me, seemed to be permanently forced further open than they were designed to go. His clothes all seemed to have been made from someone 50 that years That frisbee is not that serious. Leave it. Do you see how this guy is looking? He got his belly out, shirt like five sizes too small, pants is petite, and haircut is all jacked up. As they struggled to cling to his fully grown body, it was as cold, but he was wearing a sun hat, a tiny one for children, which barely fit on his head. I recognized it, I didn't know how at the time. If I'd learned anything from the videos I spent my nights watching, I'd have abandoned the frisbee and left. But clearly I didn't, because not wanting to feel like a baby, I approached him. As I got closer to the man, his smile disappeared, and he removed the hat and held it on his back. I began to see his features and grinned at him. He looked tired. He was pale and his eyes were bloodshot and had huge gaping bags under them. In the entire time it took me to get to him, the man didn't move an inch, other than the odd blink. Not even his eyes shifted. At this stage, I was getting uneasy. I just wanted to get it and leave. Bro, it is not that serious for a dollar frisbee. You can get a whole nother frisbee for a freaking dollar. You risking your life to get it because you don't want to seem like a baby? You're a dummy. Have my frisbee back, please? Thanks. The thought of that conversation, if you can even call it a conversation... It wasn't a conversation. He didn't talk back. Shiver. I locked the front door as soon as we got home. We were both a bit shaken, and Alfie looked tired, so I gave him some more food and put him to bed. It took him about two hours to fall asleep. He kept complaining that he'd have another nightmare about that man. I told him he wouldn't, but he wasn't convinced. I see him every night. He whispered to me. Well, if you see him again, don't worry. I'll be here to fight him off. This seemed to settle him down, and soon he was fast asleep. At about 11, it was time to put my film on. I couldn't have my mom knowing that I was watching it, so I did something naive and ignorant. It's something I'll always regret. Oh my gosh. I turned off the security cameras. I watched it for two hours straight, my eyes never straying from the screen. Until... I replayed the last few seconds of the film. But the sound didn't happen again. It was coming from inside my house. Alfie? He didn't reply, but I could see him under Damn. the cover, so I thought he was just asleep, and I didn't want to wake him up. I swear, if I thought anything worse had happened, I'd have checked. You okay? I thought mm -hmm. maybe I was just worrying too much, hearing things. The window wasn't open when you left. Why did they have him babysitting? Oh my gosh! Hearing things. It was late. The film had been scary. Maybe it was just all in my head. This man is slow. I knew from the sound of his voice it was him. Alfie! Alfie? Usually this much noise would have woken him up. Alfie, what's oh, going on? Oh my gosh. I knew something was wrong. It was him. The doll. Why would you still keep checking the bed if you heard him outside? Make it make sense. 
Are you serious? Oh! I couldn't believe it. It had to be some kind of sick prank. It had to be. But it wasn't. It was the man I'm I'd spoken to earlier. Oh. He'd taken my brother. Alfie! Mm -hmm. I was certain they'd be gone before I could reach them. But he didn't set off straight away. He watched as I tried helplessly to do something. Jump I on the car! And I shouted and I banged on the windows and I tried to open the doors. But nothing worked. It was all Damn. a dream. There was nothing I could do for my brother, my best friend, as he was stolen away from me. It was too late for the police to do anything. It was too late for anybody to do anything. He was gone, and in time, I'd have to come to accept that. Did he even get an image of how a car look? The license plate? Anything? Yo, they picked the wrong person to babysit. You have nine new messages. First message. Hello? If you're out with Alfie, call me back when you get back in, please. Love you guys. Bye. End of message. Second message. Daniel, we've been trying to get a hold of you for hours. Is everything all right? Did you turn the security cameras off? It'll be fine. The security system probably just glitched out. Bro, you hey, can't... Alfie, just call us as soon as you can, okay? know how mom worries. Oh End of message. My gosh. Third message. Listen, Daniel, we're starting to get really worried now. If you don't pick up, one of us is gonna have to come home to check if everything's okay. Please pick up. End of message. Fourth me Y'all. Daniel, are you okay? Daniel! What's happened? Please answer! I couldn't bear to tell them anything. That was seven years ago. We never found him. When I asked my parents if they'd seen anything at all of this man whilst they checked on us during the night, they looked at me, concerned and confused. What do you mean? They asked. I could only stare at them in horror. Wow. Every night, around two, he'd come and check on Alfie, Lucy, and me to see if we were sleeping. Daniel? They told me. No, no we didn't. didn't. The police wanted security camera footage of the man, but of course, there wasn't any. It automatically deletes any footage older than 24 hours. Wow. Which meant... I've been mindless enough to stop it recording on the only night we could have seen him. You know, the strange thing is, I don't even know if I want Alfie to be alive. Because if he is, God knows what that monster has done to him. <sighs> Sorry if I've gone on too long, but the guilt's been killing me. I had to get it out somehow. I only tell it as a story because, well, people like stories, and I want as many people to hear this as possible. Alfie, if somehow you're watching, bro. I love you. Bro. And I'm so, so sorry. Please, don't lose hope. And to the man who took you, it's not too late. If you have any heart at all, and even if you don't, Please, please let my little brother come home. To everybody else, if someone comes into your bedroom at night, open your eyes. You never know who it might be. I still stay up late at night. But it's not because I don't want to sleep. It's because I can't. In case anyone sees Alfie, this is the last good photo we took of him. That's it. Stay safe. Thank you. Bro, that was wild. 
first of all, he's fired from being the babysitter. That is it for this reaction video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, everything that we watch will be down in the description box below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Also, share the video. Like I said, don't be stingy. And I'll see you guys again for another reaction.